Hi. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to target a resume for a specific job application. So in a previous video, we talked about elements of generic resume design, and we, we had looked at this uh, fake resume from Rebecca Student, uh, who I just made up. Uh, she's not a real person, but um, this is also a this is a so this is a generic resume. This is the kind of resume that Rebecca Student might give out at a, a career fair or something like that, where she was giving it to a lot of different employers without necessarily uh, intending to get a specific job, but what you what you want to do when you find a particular job that you're interested in uh, is to tailor this resume for that specific job so if Rebecca student was interested in this staff accountant or analyst position at Theraplay Inc she would want to look critically at this job ad and we've already had a, we've already had a video where we, we read this uh, add critically, and I'll put a link to that video both in this video and in uh, the description of the video below, so you'll be able to find that easily. But let's say Rebecca wants to go from her generic resume, which is set up like this, to a tailored resume for this job. What are some of the areas that she's really going to be looking at? Well, in terms of a lot of the content, um, so obviously like contact information, etc., etc., is not going to change. Education largely is what it is uh, at this stage, so there's not that much she can do to really change that. Where she can make changes, so you don't want to add or delete thing, particular entries mostly from your work experience and in her case she's gone for leadership experience as a, a secondary category but what you can do where you can make a lot of changes is in the descriptions of your job activity or your descriptions of what you did uh, in her case in leadership activities but again this could be um, volunteer experience this could be hobbies this could be um, awards, honors, recognition. So this, the these other categories, you can you can make a number of different choices. And then the skills section is another area that she can make changes based on what the job ad is asking for. So what Rebecca wants to do, and she's reading this job ad. We saw this uh, when we when we looked at critically reading the job ad itself. Um, is to start figuring out what's most important to them. What are the key words, key ideas, key concerns, key requirements that they have? So, uh, she's looking at this job description, um, looking at the things that it says the person hired will be responsible for. Um, in this case, it identifies the GAAP principles of accounting. So if she's familiar with that, um, that would be something she would want to list. But then you also want to go into responsibilities section, because most job ads are going to have some sort of key responsibilities or uh, key requirements, things like this. And what you want to look for is verbs. So especially verbs that recur, verbs that we see more than once. So, prepares, prepare, um, prepares. So we've got that verb a number of times. Um, responsible for, responsible for, assists, assists. So any verb that shows up more than once, you want to incorporate. You, wanna, you may want to do the same thing with nouns. So any key nouns that you're seeing over and over again. Um, bank reconciliations, credit card reconciliations, um, forecasting reports, 
Um, I think we've got reports somewhere else, but I can't spot it off the top of my head. We've got a number of similar things. Um, audit, account, accounts, um, accounts. So anything that anything that seems like a keyword, a verb or a noun especially, that shows up repeatedly is some is a, a word that you want to incorporate into your job materials because that's number one something that any sort of automated screening system is going to look for they're going to be looking for keywords and the re the resumes and application letters that have those keywords are going to move to the top of their pile but it's also something that human readers of this resume are going to be looking for. Um, and if they see, oh, this person can do a lot of the things that we're asking for, a lot of the things that we want for this position, that's likely to look good to them. So they're, they're likely to say, okay, this is a person who could do this job and we should consider them. The other thing that she wants to do is look down to the list of, sorry, I'm having trouble highlighting all of this down, down to the list of things, uh, skills, experiences, background that they require, because that gives you a good sense of what they are seeking. So some of the things, like a bachelor's in accounting with five to seven years of experience within a corporate accounting department, like either you have that or you don't. So that those are things you can't necessarily do that much about. But you can but there are also going to be skills that they are looking for. Oftentimes what are called soft skills, although some people I think are starting to call them essential skills. Um, so things like written communication and documentation skills ability to manage multiple projects to successful conclusion, analytical ability to research, deal with a variety of situations, um, ability to use logical methods to address problems and develop effective solutions. These are less concrete do you have them kind of things. So again, Bachelor's in accounting, you could say, yes, I have that, or no, I don't have that. Ability to use logical methods to address problems and develop effective solutions, that's more of a gray area. So that's not something you can say, yes, I have that, or no, I don't have that. The question is, how much do you have that? And so these more sort of soft skills type things these are things that you can list as skills that you have um, and you want to be able in an interview especially to offer evidence that you have those skills so especially for something like ability to communicate with all levels of people in a manner that illustrates superior professionalism if you've complete if you've successfully completed my uh, English 202D business writing course that would be something you could use as evidence for your ability to communicate with all levels of people in a manner that illustrates superior professionalism. So, you want to be thinking about the experiences that you've had, either on the job itself or uh, through your education, through extracurriculars, hobbies, um, whatever it is. But you, again, you want to be incorporating these ideas. So if you could incorporate written communication, if you could incorporate the word documentation, if you could incorporate the phrase manage multiple projects or managing multiple projects or some variation thereupon, if you can incorporate using logical methods into your job materials, again, those are the kinds of keywords, the kind of key ideas 
that the people doing the hiring or the, the computer program doing the hiring for this staff accountant position are going to be looking for. So if we turn back to Rebecca's resume and we look through her bullet points, one of the things we'll notice, she's actually got pretty good bullet points here. They're verb driven, monitor, serve, assist, observed, helped, tallied, and so on and so on. But they're not the verbs that the job ad is using. And so what one of the things that Rebecca is going to want to do with this resume is rewrite these descriptions. And again, I, I talked about this in the generic resume design uh, video as well, but any bullet points that tell us the basic functions of the job implied by the job title, you don't really need. So for something like a cashier at Grocery Mart, we could reasonably infer that she scanned and bagged groceries and took money and made change for customers. So she doesn't need to list those as bullet points because they just look like padding. Where we get more useful stuff is in these first two job entries and then in some of the leadership experience portions. And so if Rebecca revised this job or revised this resume, it might look something more like this. So here actually we've skimmed out those extraneous bullet points under cashier. Um, she's decided that a lot of the bullet points under leadership experience were not that significant. But the other thing she's done is she's changed these bullet points substantially. And this is really where the meat of her, her tailoring has occurred. So we're getting verbs like interpret, perform, prepare, assist, and provide. Prepared, prepared, reconciled, helped, assisted. And if we go back to the job ad itself, under the responsibilities, we can see interpret, interpret. We can see perform, perform. We can see prepare, prepares, prepare, etc., etc. So we're getting a lot of the same, we're getting actually, I think, all the same verbs that they use in their descriptions of what they want someone to do. And she's also changed some of the nouns here. So, um, da, da, da. let me try and find... So like before she had observed bank reconciliations and helped with financial reviews, she's now changed that to prepared bank reconciliations, um, assisted in closing financial reviews, both of which take us back to things listed in the job ad. So she's using a lot more of the language directly from this responsibilities section as she describes the work that she did in her previous positions. And so again, what this is going to do is act as key words, either for an automated job search or for a human reader. They're going to see this list of things and say, oh, this is the set of things, the set of experiences that we want a potential employee to have. Um, and so that's going to help make Rebecca student a much stronger candidate for this job. And it's very small scale, detail oriented changes, but it's changes oriented around keywords and key phrases that are going to jump out at readers as the things that they're looking for. And so that's what you want to do with your own tailored resume, is you want to be looking closely at the word choices in the job ad and you want to be making sure that you're using that same language to describe your own experiences.